There are four presentations about how humans impact the radiation balance in relationship to global warming. This is part one, the basics of the science. Global warming is debated extensively, but really the only way to think about the science of it, especially from the perspective of a 100 level course, is on Earth's radiation balance. This has to be the focus of understanding the basics of this important physical geography topic. And you rarely hear about the concept of a global radiation balance in the media. The greenhouse effect is a key part of the balance of radiation of our planet. Incoming solar radiation has to equal outgoing long wave radiation. But Greenhouse gases can alter the temperature of especially the troposphere from the perspective of a blanket effect. The greenhouse gases are able to absorb the outgoing long wave radiation. So in other words, solar short wave radiation incomes and then the earth itself heats up. Earth's heat then is released and greenhouse gases absorb this outgoing long wave radiation and in turn re radiate it back to Earth. Essentially, you're bouncing around long wave radiation, thermal radiation in the lower atmosphere. So, this is a representation of carbon dioxide where the infrared radiation that's bouncing around in the lower atmosphere hits and it absorbs by CO2 and it re emits it. So, pollution that generates more CO2 is basically giving the Earth's troposphere more of a blanket. You can think of it kind of like a rechargeable battery for heat. The more of this rechargeable battery you have, the more heat you can absorb and re-radiate. This may look like a complicated diagram, but really it's not terribly complicated from the perspective of what you need to know. You have the greenhouse gases that are in the lower atmosphere and the shortwave solar radiation passes through it. It's not absorbed. The Earth then absorbs the solar energy and re-emits it as heat. And it's this heat and other forms of long wave radiation that are being reabsorbed by the greenhouse gases throughout the troposphere. You can think of it as clouds because clouds definitely are part of the global radiation balance and sort of part of the greenhouse effect. If you don't have clouds on land, the radiation from Earth can be emitted and go eventually back to space after it's bounced around by the greenhouse gases. But if you have clouds, much of that long wave radiation from the Earth's surface is re-emitted. So clouds, smoke, other factors, dust, can sort of act as a blanket, much in the way greenhouse gases do. So in your own experience, when it's cloudy at night, it doesn't cool down as much. And it's because the long wave radiation is being bounced right back down to you at the surface. The key greenhouse gases that I'll talk about here are carbon dioxide and methane. A little less so nitrous oxide. But it's really these two ones and water vapor that I'll have as the focus here in this presentation. But the major players, the carbon dioxide concentration before the Industrial Revolution was about 280, 300 parts per million of carbon dioxide and about 700 parts per billion of methane. The other components of this table are really much less important for this lecture. The current concentration of CO2 and methane are even much higher than presented in this table. So these are the two big players. Yes, there are other greenhouse gases like ozone pollution in their cities and industrial gases and things called sulfur hexafluoride, but they're important but less of a player in this basic lecture at the 100 level. This is a very important concept slide that I'll be using throughout all of the global warming presentations. You can think of the 
issue of climate change or climate variability like an XY graph. The Y axis might be the climate variable of temperature or precipitation and then time. So the issue is, is the change a cycle, something that goes up and down? Is it randomness? Like it was a hot week today, but last week was cooler. Or is there a long-term trend? Sometimes it's very hard to sort out a trend of a climatic change from a cycle from randomness. And that's one of the key issues in the global warming debate. Is it something that's going to cycle back down or is it a permanent change that's even going to get worse? No matter your views on global warming, pretty much everybody, no matter the political perspective, no matter the scientific perspective, everybody agrees on the basic data. Data gathered out in the middle of the Pacific and Mauna Loa reveal that greenhouse gases are going up and up and up. Same with methane and same with nitrous oxide. The basics that we are polluting the troposphere is not argued. This is an important graph and another very important way of looking at the basic science of global warming. There are certain things in the atmosphere that will cool it and there are certain things in the atmosphere that will warm it. So on the cooling factor, the critical ones are things like dust in the atmosphere. Some small biomass burning will cool. If you clear the land and you make it white, land will cool. Um, some people think that organic carbon from fossil fuel building might cool. The biggest cooling agent is sulfates from coal pollution. But then on the other side of the issue, there's warming factors. The sun, clouds that trap the heat, mineral dust also will warm. Something called carbon black that I'll discuss later. Tropospheric or pollution ozone and then all the greenhouse gases that I talk about. CO2, that's carbon dioxide, CH4, that's methane, and to oh, that's nitrous oxides. So it's a complicated balance and the confidence we have in how much warming will occur from each of these components it has big error bars. That's what those error bars show is our level of confidence not particularly high. Medium for some, low for others. This is an old graph, but still very powerful. Let me walk you through what's here. There's volcanic activity that will cool the planet by releasing sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. There's solar activity that goes up and down. There's dust that goes up and down. And then there's greenhouse gases that have been basically going up since the Industrial Revolution tremendously. The big wild cards in all of this, and it's the green that you see on the edge of the graph with lots of things that can have a cooling influence, are organic and inorganic dust and other pollution. We really don't understand the aerosols very well. This graphic just shows the tip of the iceberg of the uncertainty over certain types of pollution and how it affects global warming. A polluted cloud with lots of tiny particles called aerosols will have a different prop set of properties and will be able to reflect more incoming solar radiation. And then coal pollution produces sulfate aerosols which by themselves have cooling properties. And then there's dust generated by human activities and dirt desertification that can alter things. It can cool in some places, it can warm in others. So trying to sort out how all of the pollution that we're doing around the planet plays out is very complicated with lots of uncertainty. This is an old graphic. It's about 15 years old, but it's still quite good because it illustrates the uncertainty associated with teeny tiny particles of pollution called aerosols. Carbon black Think about 
all of the tires and how your tires thin over, over time on the road. That generates carbon black. Lots of things generates carbon black. It's generally thought to be a warming influence. Some people think, no, maybe cooling. Likewise, aerosols like sulfates from coal pollution and other teeny tiny particles of dust have complicated effects on clouds on an interaction with shortwave and longwave radiation. So the bottom line is there's a lot of stuff we don't know about in predicting the future with respect to global warming and our, the role of our pollutants. So even though this diagram is 16, 17 years old, it's still a great way to look at how our pollution is influencing global warming. The red to the right of the zero radiative forcing are warming agents. The blue to the left are cooling agents. Most things warm. A lot of things cool. But there's a lot of uncertainties. I can't stress enough. There's a lot of stuff we don't know. Under the we don't know category, there are a lot of emissions that can happen from the ocean floor that can suddenly increase greenhouse gases. And this is another, we really don't know very much about it. It's deep under the ocean. The basics of global warming is that we have to keep the Earth's radiation in balance. If we pump out more greenhouse gases, we're going to change that balance. There will be more of a blanket and more warming, and then the atmosphere will just in consequence. So it all comes down to keeping Earth's radiation in balance. That's the key way to think about global warming. I do not want to tell you my own personal opinion of who's right. Is the Earth going to warm due to anthropogenic gases? Is it all a hoax? Is there a political debate? My own personal view is said by this cartoon. Okay, what if it's a hoax and we generate energy independence? We help preserve rainforests. We give, we create green jobs, sustainable green jobs, livable cities, renewable, clean water, air, healthy children. So what's wrong with creating a better world for nothing, even if it is a hoax? This is my view. Why not do the things that will make the earth have a better radiation balance from the perspective of global warming will take place because these actions are good anyway for us for our jobs for the earth's future for our kids